Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. Good evening. Hey, those, uh, this is Pastor Ron Delphine coming to you from New Nation Worship Center this evening for our midweek uh, talk and discussion. And uh, before we get started, I just want to say we are back. Uh, we had a little time get together, not get together, get away, <laughs> but it was a get together. Uh, just you know, my wife and I celebrating our 34th wedding anniversary. And we also want to um, thank those who, um, thank you for um, wishing us, you know, a happy uh, wedding anniversary. And we just praise God for the 34 years yes. that He's given us yes. and the love He's given us. And we pray that, you know, just like we had said, that it be an example uh, of God's love and His faithfulness. So Amen. we just want to thank you uh, for that. And so we are going to get ready to pray. And I uh, hope you'll spend uh, these this time with us uh, as we, as you probably see the title of Freedom from Fear. So Pastor Delphine and I are going to pray, and then we'll get started. Father, we just come before you today, and as we come, we come with thankful hearts, humble hearts, uh, and just in gratitude and thanks for the opportunity to come into your presence. Come before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Creator, the God of the universe, the God of all creation, the Creator of heaven and earth, and then in Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our King, our Master. And Lord, we thank you that you're the Prince of Peace. You're a wonderful counselor. You are the mighty God. You're the everlasting God. You're the everlasting Father as well. And Lord, we just thank you that you are the Good Shepherd the good shepherd of our souls. So, Lord, as we come, we pray for each and every heart and mind tonight, uh, those who will tune in and those who may tune in later. Lord, we pray that your word speak. Holy yes, Spirit, Lord. speak. Your word speak through us. Yes. Uh, we want your voice to be heard because you said, my sheep hear my voice, and they follow not a stranger. And as we talk about freedom from fear, victory over fear, and what fear is like, Lord. We ask you to deliver us yes. from fear. We know your word says, and we'll talk about it, where you've not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound yes. mind. Help us to recognize fears in our lives. We may be calling it something else, but help us to recognize fear, to bind the spirit of fear, to overcome the spirit of fear. Yes. And Lord, that we would look to you for where our strength comes from. You're the God who said, fear not. Amen. I am with you. Amen. So we thank you tonight. Help us to teach your word, discuss your word, because you said that your word brings life and freedom and Amen. hope Amen. and truth. And he who the Son sets free yes. is free indeed. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 So, like I said, we are back and we will be back on Sunday morning for our regular Facebook service as well as in person and we want those uh, in the area Cortez and we say hello to Cortez our Cortez family uh, tonight and in the southwest region Dolores uh, in Durango and all around the surrounding area Mancus uh, Toyoc uh, we recognize and all the people that God has created so uh, we're going to start out tonight Again, talking about freedom from fear. Um, and I may be a little, I'm going to do this because we do these and we just discuss, we look at one another. So I wanted to make sure that was I supposed to get started first? Yeah, okay, all right. You know, so sometimes you never know. I didn't know if I, I, didn't know if I was going to start off. I, did, I didn't know if I could. So that's my fault thing. But anyway, uh, talking about fear, freedom from fear, victory over fear. Um, I am, at this time in our world, in our nation, the American nation, there are many things happening that might be causing us to fear or are causing people to fear. There's obviously uh, COVID and now this outbreak of the, uh, the, the Delta variant and uh, then uh, there's storms going on across the world and around the nation, floods, and then there's fires. And then obviously there's uh, things economically that people, you know, gas prices, you know, are going out 
the roof. There's the political things all the way back into 2020 and has stretched over into uh, 2021. And unfortunately, it's probably going to stretch over into uh, 22. People are uh, fearing, concerned, those things. Then from a national and international things going around our planet, I don't know. And I wish I had prayed about this, but the enormous fires that are going on in Greece. Mm-hmm. I want to say this to us, suppose, the Americans. There is a world outside of America. And people are the same no matter what they go, where you, where you go. They might speak a different language, may look different, but their concerns, their fears that we're talking about tonight, their needs are the same. And so I was thinking about Greece and the enormous fires that are going on. It's just tragic what's happening. And then, uh, unfortunately to say this as believers, there are major concerns to be, uh, that might be causing fear in the body of Christ. What's so happening in the church, you know, as a, the impact of these other things that we might be fearful about. But I want to read something from Luke 21, 25 through 26. Uh, you could also compare this with the, the Olivet Discourse, but Jesus said, Again, this is Luke 21, uh, 25 through uh, 26. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth, listen, distress of nations. With perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Now listen, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heaven will be shaken. Now I'm going to give you just definitions of distress and perplexity. Distress means anguish. And and you break anguish down further, it means severe mental or physical pain or suffering. So Jesus is saying, because of these things that are coming on there, notice he said, the expectation, Mm -hmm. not necessarily saying legitimate, but this expectation, this mental, emotional fear that something is going to happen. And that means a severe mental, physical pain or suffering. And he said perplexity. And perplexity, another different word for that is quandary. And it means the inability to deal with or understand something complicated or unaccountable. It means an entangled state. Now I'm going to give an, an example of this, the expectation or uh, this distress. Okay, let's use COVID because it's right now. Okay, there's camps concerning uh, these things, uh, even Christian groups. Uh, for example, there's the, 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 they can become known, there's the anti-vaxxers and the anti-maskers. And even there are, you know, Christians and groups that are involved that call themselves these things. Mm -hmm. And they call the people who wear masks and the people who are getting the vaccine, they're saying, well, that's a bunch of fear. Mm -hmm. But could it be that the, well, I'm not going to wear a mask, I'm not getting the vaccine, could the root of that be fear itself? Because some of the things that have come out concerning the anti-vaxxers and anti-maskers is fear of government control. We're headed towards socialism, communism. Uh, and the other one, particularly is biblical, the, the believing that the, that the vaccine is the mark of the beast. I'm going to tell you this biblically and theologically. The mark of the beast does not come until the man of sin is revealed. And the Bible talks about, I don't have time to go those scriptures over in Thessalonians but it says these things can't happen until the, the that which is to be taken out of the way many scholars believe it means the church some people some camps they believe it's the Holy Spirit but that the man of sin can't come forth he can't initiate this mark of the beast whatever it is until he is revealed so something has to be taken away the church raptured or whatever it may be before this can happen and I was so the thought that maybe the, the the vaccine or something else is the is is the mark of the beast. Let me tell you something. When God tells us something in the Word, the Book of Revelation is not the Book of Fear. Amen. It's not the Book of Fear. It's the revelation yes. 
of Jesus Christ. When we read about what Jesus is talking about, these things uh, in Luke 21, distress of nations, guess who's not supposed to be distressed? The people of God. Guess who's not supposed to be perplexed? The people of God. But if you kind of look around, if you kind of listen, mm -hmm. all of this on whether, on each side, whichever way you stand, could the root of this really be fear? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I believe it's the mark of the beast. Oh, they're trying to control. Oh, socialism. Oh, the vaccine's got a chip in it. That's not biblical or godly faith. That is fear. And I'm going to give you a scripture, and I think my wife's going to touch on it too, but this is a very powerful scripture. Two, I'm going to give, there's some more I'm going to give, but I'm going to uh, be brief in this point. But again, Jesus said in Luke that men's hearts will be failing from fear and expectation, or the belief that something is going to happen mm -hmm. coming on the earth. It says, uh, I'm going to read 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear in love, mm -hmm. but perfect love cast out fear because fear involves torment. But listen to this. But he or she who fears has not been perfect in love. Mm -hmm. So what is the scripture saying? When we fear, mm -hmm. we've not been made perfect in love. And that love is God's love. Yes. Because if we look to the hills from where our strength comes from, our help comes from the Lord, we shouldn't fear anything or have any expectation that there's going to be government control. We're losing our country. I'm sad to say right now, and I'm going to mention this one before I read the other scripture. The census for the United States came out today. I'm not going to go into the details of it. You can go read it. But for some, unfortunately, even in the camp of God, might fear over the results. Hmm. It's not healthy. It's not godly. And it's torment. So again, but he says... Fear involves torment, and the biblical definition of torment in that scripture, because fear involves torment, it means correction, punishment, penalty. Fear brings a penalty of, of punishment upon us mentally, emotionally. Just think about some of the things I mentioned, where you are, no matter where you stand. Could the root be, could the foundation be fear? Because even when I hear people say, you know, we're going to lose whatever, that's fear. So here's another scripture I wanted to read. Because if you're worried about the government, you're worried about all, you know, takeovers and, and all this sort of thing. Remember this, Psalm 118.6. The psalmist said, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? See, Jesus said, I don't have this scripture, but he said, don't fear the one who can kill the body. My Lord, my Lord. But fear the one who can kill the body and cast soul and body into hell. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you're going to fear anything in this life, we should fear God. Amen, amen. Man can do nothing. Not governmental, not economic, there's nothing to fear. And then we know we have Matthew 6. If we first seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all of these things will be added. So again, we need to check, are we actually in fear? And then unfortunately, I'll say this, as my wife and I are ministers of God, ministers of the gospel, unfortunately, I have seen and heard other gospel preachers, ministers, ministering fear. When you have that kind of influence, when you have that kind of audience, I'm going to say to the preacher versus the saint, the Bible says test the spirits. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because you could be receiving a spirit of fear from someone who's supposed to be ministering the life of God. Amen, amen. So a couple other things. My wife will probably mention this, but Again, we mentioned 2 Timothy 1, 7. Is these great. You know, this is not something we just hang on the wall and it looks good embroidered. No, this is the, Jesus said we're supposed to live. His word is spirit and life. So 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God has not mm -hmm. given us a spirit of fear. Amen. Amen. Somebody told me once that, well, Rod, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just deeply concerned about 
socialism. I'm deeply concerned that our country, you know what I told him, deeply concerned is fear. Don't try to dress it up. But he said, but God's not, the Lord said, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and a sound man. I like to do it like this. The power of the Holy Spirit, the love of God, and the mind of Christ. First Peter 5, 6 and 7 says, Therefore humble yourselves, uh-oh, <laughs> under the mighty hand of God. See how this ties together? That he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you, or cast all your fears upon him. I'll say this, and I'm going to, well, no, I'll just say, there's a certain group that even a lot of evangelicals have unfortunately followed over the last several years, and I read a story that a father feared because of these conspiracy things that the group put out. This father who ended up killing his kids because he feared that they were part of some government takeover or whatever. Now that is demonic, it's sick, it's of the wicked one. When you fear, you've taken on and adopted the spirit of the wicked one. And this is the last one I'm going to read, in, and uh, we're going to move on to this next section from my wife. But Philippians 4, 6, and 7 say, Be anxious for no, or don't fear anything. But in everything, in everything. Did you know that song, Take Everything to God in Prayer, yes. was basically based off Philippians 4? But in everything by prayer and supplicant, with thanksgiving, not fear, biting your nails, Getting in front of the TV. Oh my God, what's going to happen? Let your request be made known to God. And we're talking about getting freedom from fear. What request, Lord, shine the light on my fears? Am I listening to fear? Am I consumed by fear? Am I listening to people who give me fear? Am I listening to preachers who give me fear? It's sad that I didn't even have to mention preachers and fear. And the peace of God. Listen, was it? Let your request be made known to that. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Guard it from what? Fear. But you notice you have to <clears throat> let your request be made known, and then the peace of God comes. Amen? Amen. So again, we need to check our fear. And Pastor Delphine's going to uh, share more on this subject. But I will say this. We've all been afraid. Yeah. Or we've all had times of fear. I'm going to go and admit, I'm going to be candid right here as I turn this over. But when we were on our trip and we went to uh, Albuquerque, and uh, they have the tram, it was the Sandia, Sandia Peak. The Sandia Peak. Yeah. Now, over my lifetime, I've had bouts of fear of heights. And it came when we got ready to go. I mean, I've, I've done... Uh, you know, uh, the zip line things. I've climbed, you know, the walls and done the big high swings on rope courses. Uh, and, but, but fly on planes. But some reason, when I looked at those towers and watched that thing, and you know, nothing, I fed myself fear. I didn't realize it when I was just looking at the videos, I was going online, and that crept And then we got out there. I literally told my wife, I'm not going up there. <laughs> I'm not going up. And you know what helped me go up? <laughs> that we had dinner reservations. It was our anniversary, uh, brother. And, the, and she even said, you better pray, pray in the spirit. I can't pray in the spirit right now. I couldn't even pray in the spirit. No, not just couldn't, I didn't want to. I was looking at them top 10,000 feet. So I'm admitting to you. Yeah. They came down once we got up there, I became a little chatterbox on the way back because I started thinking about coming back down <laughs> but I'm admitting to you yeah. I was a little afraid I was fearful you know somebody said once are you afraid of heights no I'm afraid of falling <laughs> but anyway I felt, hope you uh, that did something for you me sharing it but anyway I'm going to turn uh, and let my wife can share it again yeah. to be free from fear amen so Pastor Rod shared um, just recently his his uh, the anxiety and fear he felt, um, as he said, when we got on that tram that went over 10,000 feet. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> and so, um, so what I'll touch on real quickly 
just expound on and, and take you your can, time, baby. Okay. Take your time. And but just um, some things that I found out just looking online, some common fears, uh, top ten phobias. Um, actually, number three was the acrophobia, which Pastor Rod talked about of heights, being afraid of heights and. Number seven, um, since he kind of touched on this issue with, you know, uh, the vaccine, I don't know, maybe some, some of you or you know someone that might fall in, in the category of, of the fear of injections, uh, tripanophobia, I think is what it's called. That was no, number seven. Is that the, the fear? Of, is that the fear of long needles? I don't know. It is Big needles. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> it didn't indicate anything about the length of the needle. The length is important. I, you know, unfortunately <laughs> and sadly, as Pastor Rod said, a lot of those that may be anti-vacciners, or it's not the needle or possibly the injection that people are fearing. But again, as he said, um, there's most likely um, some of what our decision making and responses to um, things regarding what we're dealing with now with the mask, with the vaccine is rooted in fear. And so you just have to get before the Lord or um, just, just kind of not, I guess you could say be in denial, which I read it, a lot of times is what's going on with people. There's a denial factor um, but some other things here, some basic fears that uh, I, I uh, found a list of that people have. And I actually was, it, it was kind of interesting, but um, let's say I'll list the six basic ones that I found was poverty, criticism, ill health, loss of a loved one, mm. old age, and fear of death. And wow. so... Honestly, you know, we understand that we've all at one point in time had some type of thought or imagination of a fear. And if you recall, Pastor Rod touched on 1 John 4 and 18, where it states that there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out or drives out fear because there is, there is because fear has to do with punishment or torment and so this is talking about a judgment God's judgment when when John wrote this letter to believers but we know the revelation of the scripture indicates that we can have a tormenting fear here and we know that again because he quoted first Timothy second Timothy excuse me one and seven it states that God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and love and a sound mind so um, I believe one of the things I read is, um, and, and let me back up and say that a lot of times some of our fears can um, originate through, you know, personal experiences that we've had in life, um, be they from a post-traumatic stress disorder or um, maybe, um, again, experiences like we have a family member that was actually in a tornado. So we're being sensitive to the fact that these fears can originate from experiences and 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 so um, however they come we just want to comfort you tonight and we just want to um, yeah. encourage you from the word of God that he can bring peace to your mind uh, and you can receive freedom and so I want to share um, because okay in my reading let me back up again it stated that most of us have fears that are actually below the surface and we do tend to deny it. But again, just some personal things that I um, have experienced and, and, and I'll say it, it can kind of come from imagining things, yeah. your mind, okay? Yes. Um, and we know the Word of God says a very, very uh, good scripture to meditate on. It's Philippians 4 and 8. And this scripture says, Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is imaginable, admirable, I'm sorry, I'm saying it, man. <laughs> if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Amen. So it's actually telling us here in this verse 
that, you know, our mind and our imagination can get away from us. And so I, I learned from reading a little bit, bit in preparation for this talk that in the Hebrew, their language, it mentions two types of fear. One is Pashad, P-A-C-H-A-D, and one is Yara, Y-A-R-A-H. And it states that, um, that these two different ways or that we think about fear, Pashad is actually the fear of projected or imagined things. Mm -hmm. It stems from worry about what could happen right. and, and that which we imagine. So that which we imagine comes from our mind. And so because that comes from our mind, what does the Bible tell us is this, to cast down every thought and every yes. imagination Amen. Amen. and bring it in unto the subjection and to the obedience of God's word. So if God's word tells us not to fear, he hasn't given us the spirit of fear. When we state that faith rises up in us and faith builds up in us because we're meditating on his word. Um, and I'll just share real quickly again. Um, and that's, I know in the past has been some areas where I've been, I, I guess, struggled or I've had things. And like I said, things can come into your mind. And so a lot of the things that come into your mind are imaginations. Yes. And so I'll just share with you real quickly um, some verses that have helped me overcome um, when those type uh, fears come or have come in my life. One is Isaiah 26, 3. This is, this verse states that he, he, talking about God, he will keep us in perfect peace. He will keep you, me, whose mind is steadfast, meaning stayed on him because we trust in him. Amen. So the, the issue of fear is really a trust issue. Yeah. It's a trust issue. Um, I read Philippians 4, 8. It did, again, that deals with the mind. Um, Pastor Rod and I both have quoted 2 Timothy 1 and 7. We taught our sons this verse early in their life and repeatedly state this verse. And it helps us also. Um, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. I can't tell you the number of times when I've repeated that verse and how it's helped me. Um, Jude 1 and 20. Uh, I don't know why. Don't ask me. Um, but, you know, when Rod and I are traveling and I see something dead in the road, it just gives me like, Ugh. <laughs> This is true. I still don't I understand. She even started praying in the spirit of things. That's where I was going with this because Jude 1 and 20 states that pray with the Holy Spirit's help. But um, that's pray in your building up your faith. Amen. So I believe that, uh, you know, when we pray in the Holy Spirit, pray in the spirit, it builds our faith up. So it's like it just builds my spirit man up. So Rod always asks me, he said, honey. Why are you doing that? Why are you praying in the spirit? I said, I don't know. I just, it's like an icky feeling when it comes to animals and dead stuff. But yeah, anyway. I just throw in and said, because I'm thinking, why would you need to pray in it? Because it's dead. I mean, it's dead. It's, it's roadkill. Yeah. So it's been killed. He was the one that needed, he or yeah. she was the one that needed to fear. They gone. Yeah, but, but, you know. but the biggest one I'll say, and I'm still meditating on, um, especially when COVID's first started back in 2020 was Psalm is Psalm 91. Yes, Psalm 91. Psalm 91 is a big one for me. As I said, I'm still meditating on that Psalm and applying it. And it can be applied to so many um, uh, ways we can become fearful and tormented by dangers or um, as we read, you know, one of the big ones is, uh, 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 ill health um, just different things like that it covers just various things but understanding that you trust God okay and he's with you and so real quickly that's about all I have but just want you to know that um, we know that fear is real we know um, that the word of God tells us that we um, we can have victory we can have freedom from this. And so 
again, I believe the biggest uh, way and personally in my own life is through meditation of, in God's word, uh, meditating on those various scriptures that we listed and just just trusting him. Amen. 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 And, you know, and as we uh, close, you know, as my wife was explaining, I thought about this scripture. Uh, it's in uh, Matthew and probably many of us know it. But Jesus talked about his Matthew 7, uh, 24. And it's really what uh, Pastor Delphine was explaining. I'll read in the NIV. Because when she was giving those different scriptures, meditating upon them, mm -hmm. even Psalm 91. Here's what she was saying that Jesus said we're supposed to do. Again, Psalm 91 is not just a cute, you know, nice psalm that, you know, we can put on the wall and, you know, just, you know, just get mesmerized. No, it's what we're supposed to do. And I'll say how Jesus said, he said, therefore, this again, this is Matthew 24, um, uh, not Matthew 20, Matthew 7, 24, but this is what it says. I want to read the NIV before we go. Therefore, and everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice mm. is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And that's the key. In, I think New King James or King James says he that do of them but I love the NIV he said practice so when my wife is giving this about song I went practice mm -hmm. doing it Jesus talked about practice even disciples are supposed to practice the teachings of their master so that's what we really want that's what you know here at New Nation Worship Center we want to help people know God know his word and practice his word so again when we read 2 Timothy 1 7 as we talk about fear tonight he says for god's not given us a spirit of fear but a power and a love and a sound man we have to learn how to walk that out and i attach that again and i want to read this one more time before we go first peter 5 6 through 7 therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of god that he may exalt you in due time casting all your care upon him for he cares for you god cares about what we fear but we have to bring it to him. And then when we bring it to him, then he or his peace will come and will dispel the fear. So we just want to thank you tonight. We may expound on more on this, but let me tell you something. Do uh, test the spirits. Check your heart and your mind. And ask the Lord, am I being motivated by fear? Is what I'm hearing true? Remember, Jesus said in Luke 21, my wife explained this again. I don't know if she knew I was going to do this particular part. Remember, Jesus said in Luke 21, 26, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation. She talked about the belief that something is going to happen. Yeah. That, and we could build up things and there'd be no reality to it. Mm -hmm. Nothing legitimate. And unfortunately... It is out there, unfortunately, even in the camp of God, even along the lines of conspiracy theories, believe it or not, are a major tool of fear. So I'm just going to say this. My wife and I say this. Please be careful. Stay with the word. Stay in prayer. Cast all your cares and your fears upon him because he cares for us. Amen. So we're going to pray. We love you tonight. Join us on Sunday. If, you can, if you're in the area, please join us in Cortez, 500 North Washington Street. If you can't be there, you're out of town in another state, uh, come on to our Facebook uh, at uh, 1030 Mountain Daylight Time. So, again, thank you for the well wishes. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the thank prayers. You. Thank you for the support. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight yes, Lord. for our time in your presence, yes. time in prayer, time in your word. Lord, we pray that my wife and I, Pastor Delphine and I, we ministered some life. Yes, Lord. We ministered light mm -hmm. to come and shine where there may be darkness, where there may be fear, where there may be despondency. Lord, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we ask you to speak to your people and deliver them from the spirit of fear, for you have not given us, God, you've not given us the spirit of fear, but power, the yes. power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Love, which is the love of God. 
shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And a sound mind you've given as you say we have the mind of Christ. Yes. The mind of Christ does not fear. So we love you tonight. We look to you where our strength comes from because our help over fear is from you, O oh God. We thank you. We pray for those who are dealing with some kind of fear tonight, some kind of torment, some kind of worry or some expectation or thinking something bad is going to happen, whether it's from a family situation, whether it's on a national level, whether it's uh, uh, finances, whether uh, whatever it may be. We pray with you right now and we bind the spirit of fear over your life right now. And be delivered. And receive the peace and the love of Jesus right now. So God, we thank you. You love your people. You love people. And we love people. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks again. We love you. Have a good night.